Hello. Year two students, welcome back to Remote Learning for TTC through radio lessons. My name is Teacher Emma, and I'm going to be taking you through today's lesson. To support continued learning, Rwanda Education Board, in partnership with World Bank and other partners, to support remote learning for all levels of education, including TTC. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at play. What do we mean by play? And play in our childhood. Are you ready? And as usual, I want to remind each and every one of you to make sure you have a pen, a notebook, and make sure you are in a very safe and free environment. My dear friends, before we start, I want to remind each and every one that uh, this lesson, much as I said it is for year two students, all options, I want to call upon all year ones and year threes. This could be an opportunity for you for revision. I am happy to be with you today once again, and I hope we are going to learn together. Now, my friends, our lessons today are going to be on play. Play, which is Unit 3 and uh, under the Foundations of Education, but specifically we are concentrating on play in early childhood. And so, what are we trying to focus on here? We want to look at how we can be able to design opportunities for young children to be able to engage in different types of play and interact with them as they play to build their thinking and language skills. Are we together, my friends? So let us try to look at play. And play has been defined by different scholars as, and we have different scholars that were able to define play, and some of them are our known psychologists. According to Piaget in 1962, play is the way the child learns about his or her environment. He continues to urge that Play has an interactive nature that facilitates construction of knowledge, and that is according to Piaget. However, Anna Fraud, in 1965, a daughter of Sigmund Fraud, also uses the approach of the unconscious self and says that play is an acceptable behavior through which a child exposes his or her emotions and impulses. Also, another sociologist called Gross, in 1901, he described play as a means through which children get an opportunity to practice the necessary life skills. Are we together, my friends? And then we have another one who is called Kufaro, and this was in 1974. He said, and I quote, Play is the visible language of childhood wherein we see and hear the total child functioning, revealing his or her concerns and conflicts, so, my dear friends, we have been trying to look at how different scholars were able to define play. Now, my friends, before we go very far, I want you to remember, as a young child, the type of play that you engaged yourself in, or the kind of play that children within your environment, where you stay, what type of play, what type of games do you get to see children engaged in? Great. Okay. Now, 
Let us look at some of the characteristics of play. Are we together, my friends? Remember, as we work, as we learn, always remember to take note in your notebooks of some of the key words that are so important that will help you to remember these topics. So, one of the characteristics of play is play is pleasurable. I want you to underline that word, pleasurable. In other words, pleasure. Play is pleasurable in a way that participants may not necessarily be, may not be necessarily laughing, but there is enjoyment in any play activity. It has been found that an activity that endangers or that involves so much stress in the participant can hardly be described as pleasurable. So pleasurable, what do we mean here? Children, once they play, even if they don't smile or laugh, but within themselves, they feel happy, they enjoy. If you have seen children play, and I know senior twos, I mean year two, all of you have done play, I mean you've, you've done your school practice, and you have seen children when it reaches break time. Very many children will always love to get out and play. So play, another characteristic is that play is voluntary. This means that the activity is not a prescribed duty and the player does not expect a reward. There's no coercion into play and the player decides whether to play or not. It's not a forced thing. So children decide today at break time, I am going to play with my friends or I'm not feeling well and today I'm not going to play. We also saw that play is not goal-oriented. It's not focused on some product. This means that the process is more important than the end. What do I mean here? Actually, Fergus, in 2010, he regarded play as intrinsically motivated. It's from within. This means that play is the end in itself done only for satisfaction of doing it. When you see children during break time and they are out in the field playing, and in most cases, they are just playing for the sake of playing. So in other words, they just want to play and have fun. Another characteristic is play is actively engaged in by the player. In play, the child concentrates on the activity. The involvement could be physically, mentally, and psychological. You get to see, if you stand within the playground, just observe and see how children wholesomely are taken into play. It, it shows you that they are very active physically, emotionally, and psychological. Play also involves a lot of pretense. Play portrays what-if attitude. In actual fact, play has been described as the opposite of reality. Play involves a certain element of make-believe. What do we mean here? Play, it involves a distortion of reality to accommodate the interest of the player. Are we together, my friend? This is particularly true of the symbolic play that is so characteristic of the preschool years. When children spend much of their time experimenting with new roles and playing out imaginary scenes, play is flexible. If I say play is flexible, it means normally when it comes to play, children always modify 
according to what they wish to be in or according to the wishes of the player. Are we together friends? So, the difference between play and a game is that play is an activity for amusement, especially among the young, while the game is an activity with rules performed either alone or with others. What do I mean here? Um, when children, the, especially young children, when they play, in most cases, it's for enjoyment. Remember, we are looking at play in the early years. Play allows children to use their creativity while developing their imagination. And, of course, physical, cognitive, emotional strength. If you observe children playing, especially young children, you will see them using a lot of strength, concentration, and they are taken physically, emotionally, and psychologically. Because play is important to healthy brain development. It is through play that children at a very early age engage and interact in the world around them. Play is very important. And that is why as teachers and as teachers-to-be, you are encouraged always to use play as a method to be able to support children and especially their brain development. Play activities involve the child's total self and use of all forms of energy. Play is comparable to food as a necessity for growth and development of a child. It has been urged that play gives the child the reason for existence and gives assurance of immort immortality. <music> Now, my friends, that is why, as teachers, we have to create an opportunity for children to be able to play. You have seen so many children in class. They are always quiet. But when it comes to outside, they are able to show their emotions, their expressions, and they do that freely. So that shows you how important play and the aspect of play and actually, different scholars, and some of them even compare play to food, that the way the body needs food to grow is the same way our body needs play. You have seen big people or even you people doing physical exercises. What are you doing? You are trying to do because play relaxes the body. Now, what does play help children Play helps children to acquire skills of body and mind. When we teach children through play, they acquire skills. Actually, some researchers have shown that children, some, a number of children learn so much through play. And they acquire a number of skills through play. So that is why... As teachers, we have to try our level best and involve or include play as one of the approaches that we should be using in teaching. Play helps children to understand, sympathize, and empathize. Play helps these children to be able to understand the world around them, be sympathetic, but also empathetic. We have seen, or sometimes you see children when they are playing out in the field, and maybe one of their friends falls down. What happens? Some of them come, and they are able to sympathize. They say sorry. Others are able to come and lift their friends. They are trying to put themselves into the shoes of their friend who is in pain. Play 
helps children acquire competition skills and they learn how to cope with failure and success. It is through play that the child is able to learn that in life I can succeed or I can fail. And now that's a big skill for them to understand that if I fail today, no problem, tomorrow I might win. So play also helps children to persevere. So in other words, they acquire the ability to struggle towards the desired end. A child, once they are playing and there are two teams playing and the other team is winning, this other team doesn't give up. They have to try and struggle to see that they also win. That is perseverance. So play helps children acquire healing for hearts and sadness. Whenever you see children playing, even if they were sad before, but you get to see them now showing a very warm and they are always laughing. So in other words, play heals. It's a medicine. Play also in children releases um, anger and uh, in most cases towards self-expression. There are children that we have in classes sometimes because, and the number of them, especially the introverts, you will see them expressing themselves in a very harsh manner. But if they are introduced and exposed to play, these young learners learn to be able to express themselves in a manner that is so soft but also nice. Play also provides with a complex awareness of the world and her or his ability in addition to it. When we do play, especially with the young children, they get to learn that they are part of the world. And therefore, it gives them an opportunity to appreciate others around them. Dear student teachers-to-be, do you see how important as teachers we need to involve and embed play in our activities? Especially teachers who are teaching very young children. Now, having seen the importance of play and what play plays in a child's development, as teachers, what is our role as children play? Because it is not the fact that when young children go out to play, it is not an opportunity for us to go away and do our business. No. We must be with them. So I want us to look at the role of a teacher or an adult, by the way. We even encourage parents also to support their children in playing. So in order to help a child learn and know, you need to learn to know your child, which you can do by supporting their play. You can support children's play by parents, teachers. Do you play with the children? Okay, so what do we need to do? As an adult, as a teacher, you are required to pay attention to the environment and the entire structure. When you structure an environment or when you plan a play area, indoor or outdoor, based on the child's strength, abilities and needs, you can enhance their normal play and help them be successful and independent. So we need to make sure that the environment is safe and secure. Building and, ex and extending. Challenge a child's current knowledge or understanding through opportunities or materials that extend upon their current experience and understanding. When children play, uh, this goes to parents and teachers. We need to expose children with materials that would challenge their thinking and understanding, building on their player knowledge. So, parents and teachers, 
know that we have a big role to make sure that we provide materials that children indoors or outdoors that they can uh, get exposed to and play. Be uh, providing choices. What do we mean by providing choices? So we give children freedom to make their own choices. And this is not only empowering them, but also helping them to lead their own learning experiences based on their interests and abilities. So my dear student teachers, you can see that when it comes to play, teachers also have got a big role to play the same way with parents. Talking about play, adults can extend and support the child's play simply by engaging with children during play. Adults can talk to children about their play. By being involved, children learn that adults are invested in them and they respect their play decisions. How many times as parents, as teachers, do we show interest when the young children are playing? It's another great opportunity for us to bond with these children. And it is very easy. There are so many ways you can get involved. And trust me, my friend, one of the ways is to get near them, talk to them, show them how you are interested in the game or in the play that they are having. And that creates a lot of confidence in them. But also, it shows that you are interested in them. The role of another role of an adult also is validating their effort. Participants in play with your child or participating in play with your child is fun for them and shows them that you value what they are doing. Your presence and proximity to children can communicate a lot to them. My dear friends, we have always to show interest to these children. We must show them that we are interested in the activity they are doing. Now, Another thing is that as an adult, adding to children's play, what do we mean here? In actively participating in play, when invited, adults can extend upon a child's current knowledge and help them make new connections. This can be done by modeling positive behavior and interactions. So as adults, as teachers, we want to make sure that we use that aspect of play to again now challenge children to think higher, to think, add on the existing knowledge that they have, to make sure that they make connections with new knowledge. Again, preventing problem. It's one of the roles an adult or a teacher can be able to play. By being actively involved in the process of play, adults are in good position to intervene if a situation arises. When a child might need help, when it is an interpersonal conflict, a problem, or a safety concern, it is important to remember children need opportunities to practice problem solving and conflict resolution independently as well. Make sure to give children ample opportunities to practice these skills on their own and only intervene if necessary. You have seen children playing in the playground and sometimes they fight, sometimes among us themselves they are able to settle their disputes. But as an adult, you need to be standby. You need to be on a lookout to see that when the situation gets out of hand, you are there to be able to prevent further escalation of the problem. Building children up, that is one of the roles. Some children might need help engaging in activities or joining an activity or when an adult regularly a part of their play, they can be a good bridge to help children feel comfortable initiating and participating in play. Some children, they fear play, but it is our role as teachers to make sure that our children get to understand. Now, before we go very far, 
Let us look at what are the types of play children are always engaged in. We have structured play, uh, and it's generally adult-led, where, for example, a teacher or a parent is able to provide directions and specific tasks in order for a child to learn a new skill. Are we together, my friends? Another one, which is also very nice, it is called the unstructured or free play or open-ended. This is where a child, children lead themselves into the type of play that they want to play. Uh, of course, it doesn't require an outcome or product at the end. And we need always to make sure that we can give them papers to do painting. We can give them balls, all sorts of materials that can help them be able to explore their creativity and imagination. Now, we have indoor and outdoor. Indoor, these are play or games or activities that take place within the classroom. And also, we have the outdoor. So, indoor play is organized inside or interior, inside the class. They are specifically designed for learners to play in and have fun with. They are soft, contained in structure. So, these are some of the games that we play with the children in class. Whereas outdoor is one of the fundamental aspects that characterizes childhood. Children need exposure to the natural world through exploration, experimentation, motivation, and even manipulating using their senses. Now, benefits of play, of course, as we wind up. So there are numerous opportunities. Play uh, helps to their stress relief. There are greater visual motor integration, greater creativity, stronger verbal and social skills, and play also production of vitamin D, an essential vitamin for bone health, and through exposure to sunlight, and also increased attention and cognitive abilities. Now, as teachers, we want to make sure that uh, we have to be careful in creating a safety environment for children to play. So make sure that the place is safe, make sure that uh, there are no broken parts or stones or anything or materials that can really injure children or stagnant water, visible cracks or sometimes broken bottles or electric wires or animal excrements or maybe um, foreign objects that could be there that could be dangerous for children to play. Now, my friends, we are coming to the end of our lesson today. As we conclude, let us review some of the key points that we looked at. We looked at the definition of play, characteristics of play, the benefits of play to children in general. We also looked at the types of play, benefits, and also safety. Students, teachers, and parents, thank you for your participation. This lesson has been produced by Rwanda Education Board in collaboration with World Bank, UNICEF, and IE Rwanda. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Until next time, goodbye.